Hello, my name is Tilata Agbera, and today we're going to be discussing Lab 1, Charged Tapes. In this lab, the main goal was to become familiar with the idea of charge, as well as to become familiar with the amount of excess charge found on everyday objects. The purpose of this lab was to determine the approximate amount of excess charge found on a piece of charged clear tape. And the results of this was that one piece of clear tape had an excess charge of about 3.34 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. In this lab, we made use of something called a U-tape to perform all of our experiments. To get this, we first cut a piece of tape around 20 centimeters long and stuck it to the table. We then cut another piece of tape around the same length, folding one of the ends slightly to make a handle. This is the actual U-tape. We then stick this U-tape onto the base tape and quickly rip it off of the base tape by the U-tape handle. For our first experiment, we hung the charged U-tape vertically from the edge of a desk and then brought our hand close to the tape to observe what would happen. Our expectations for this experiment were that, if done properly, an attraction would be observed between the charged tape and the hand, and our observations matched this expectation as the U-tape was indeed attracted to the hand. This proved that there was indeed an excess charge on the U-tape. For our second experiment, we made two U-tapes, charged them both, and then put them close to each other to observe the results. We then took one of the U-tapes, charged it again, and brought it close to a neutral object and then observe those results as well. Our expectations for this experiment was that, since we assumed that both U-tapes had the same charge, that the U-tapes would repel from each other but attract to the neutral object. Once again, our observation matched the expectation as the U-tapes repelled away from each other but were attracted to the neutral object, which was a notebook. For our third experiment, we wanted to determine what kind of charge was on the U-tape. Was it positive or was it negative? To do this, we rubbed the end of a plastic pen on a woolly surface to generate a negative charge on the end of the plastic pen. We then brought that pen closer to one of the charged U-tapes and observed the results. Our expectations for this experiment was that if the U-tape was positively charged, it would be attracted to the pen since it was negatively charged. If the U-tape was negatively charged, we expected that it would repel away from the pen. And then our observations were that the U-tape was attracted to the pen, therefore establishing that the U-tapes have a positive excess charge. For the fourth experiment, we wanted to determine how much charge is on the U-tape. And to do this, we suspended one of the U-tapes to a new two neutral objects, and then took the second U-tape and held it underneath the suspended U-tape. We then raised the second U-tape until it started making the suspended U-tape float, and then we recorded the distance between the two U-tapes at which the first tape started floating. Before we can use that information to determine the amount of charge on the U-tape, we need to establish some fundamental physics and assumptions first. For one, Coulomb's law states that the Coulombic constant times the two point charges over the distance squared is equal to the electrical force that one charge has on the other. Also, the force of gravity is equal to the mass of whatever object is being affected by gravity times the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.8 times 10 meters per second squared. Third, like charges repel and opposite charges attract. And fourth, that the number of electrons on a surface is equal to the total charge on that surface divided by the charge of an electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. For our assumptions, we assume that the U-tapes have the same charge, and we're assuming that the U-tapes behave like point charges in this situation. With those established, we can now move on to the calculations, where we found the force of gravity by using the mass of the tape times the acceleration due to gravity to get the force, we then used that force and substituted it in for the electrical force because if the two U-tapes are balanced out with each other and one's floating due to the other, that means that the electrical force of one U-tape on the other is canceling out the force of gravity. So once we substitute in the force of gravity for the electrical force, we can rearrange the equation to solve for the charge. Since both charges are the same, we can make Q1 and Q2 Q squared, and that's how we get 3.37 times 10 to negative 9 coulombs for the charge on one U-tape. We then use this charge and divide it by the charge of an electron to find the number of electrons, or excess electrons, on that U-tape. And then we use the area of the tape, as well as the area of an atom, to find the amount of atoms total down on that electron. We can then use that information along with the number of electrons on the U-tape to determine the ratio of excess electrons to atoms on the U-tape, which is all on this page. Here's a snippet of my glow script code along with the visualization of the tapes as point charges, also showing the forces modeled by arrows. Now that we're at the end, we have some reflective questions to answer. 
If the electrons had a positive charge and the protons had a negative charge, the only thing that would change in this situation is what the U-tapes are attracted to, as the charge that the U-tape has would flip from being a positive charge to a negative charge. And why is it important to handle the charge tapes as little as possible? This is because when a charge tape comes in contact with your hands, it transfers the electrons, well, the excess electrons from the charge tape to your hand. So the more you touch it, the more electrons are transferred until eventually the tape becomes neutral in charge.